I didn't even know there was a nudist beach on Duelist Kingdom. Oh, hey. What's up? Wasn't looking at naked people there. It's little Karibo again. I'm still stuck on Duelist Kingdom. I say stuck, but you are welcome to leave at any time, but then you would be going home a loser. And there's only two kinds of people who leave Duelist Kingdom losers. Losers and big fat losers. And I'm probably the latter. I couldn't help but notice when I posted that video yesterday, most of you, instead of replying, oh god, little Karibo, you're stuck on an island with nobody to help you, most of you said, little Karibo, you're an idiot. Why are you trying to make a deck out of 25 cards? Because you see, I'm opening a different booster pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards every day, leading up to Christmas so that I can challenge Pegasus in the Duelist Kingdom finals on the 25th. And rightly, most of you are like, little Karibo, that's not gonna work. You need 40 cards in a deck in order to challenge someone. It won't work otherwise. To which I say, it's Duelist Kingdom. The rules do not apply. It's not that I'm wrong. It's that there are are no rules to be wrong about. So yeah, welcome to the December 2nd edition of what I am calling Desert Island Dex, which is a series that I'm doing this December in conjunction with Masako X and his lovely girlfriend, Philly, where we open different themed trading card packs every day leading up to the uh, festive season. He's doing Dragon Ball, I'm doing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like 2008 all over again. He's just doing it from the comfort of his home though. I'm doing it in the trenches. Deep, thick, in the trenches of Duelist Kingdom. Last time I opened a pack of pendulum themed cards and I got m Double Iris Wizard, I think it was called. Let me check. Oh yeah, it was Double Iris Magician. And apparently this is actually a variation on Yuya's main monster from the Arc 5 series. I got told that on Twitter by, I believe, Sephirex. I think he told me. Shout out to Sephirex. So yeah, and I'm not gonna be able to defeat Pegasus with one card alone, guys. Which is why I have yet another booster pack to open. I'm very excited. This one's called Circuit Break. And it's got nine cards in it. Almost double the amount that I got from the last one. Which means there's almost double the chances of getting a pot of greed. And we may find out what it does. <laughs> uh, by the way, while I'm opening this, I should mention that some of you have been mentioning in the comments that if this doesn't end with a duel, then it won't be, uh, it won't be worth it. And I never started this intending to duel anybody. But uh, if you guys like these videos and, uh, you know, if they show interest, if people are interested in them, yeah, I might end them with a duel. Why not? It, it could be fun. Let's see what we've got here. Of course, I would probably get lose immediately because I'm bad at this. Oh, <laughs> immediately, right off the bat, we've got one of the best cards I've ever seen. Duck Dummy. <coughs> Duck Dummy. You heard me right. <laughs> it's got a picture of a rabbit wearing uh, goggles and it's got baby ducks and a mother duck hiding behind it and there's some sort of demonic creature being like, oh god, the snot dripping from its nose. This is the most surreal thing I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at. Like, what is the story here? Did Satan try to take these ducklings' souls and did the mother duck make a- Is it the story of Mother Goose except Satan got involved? Because the, the ducklings look completely nonplussed by the existence of this giant purple demon dog thing. So it's a winged beast slash Gemini slash effect monster. And some of you may know what that means. Not me. Presumably it means it's a winged beast, which doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's a duck, isn't it? <laughs> Ducks have wings? Yeah. It says, this card is treated as a normal monster. I'm not treating it as a normal anything. Look at it. While face upon the field or in the graveyard, which is abbreviated to GY, which is the news to me. <laughs> GY because you go into the graveyard. While this card is a normal monster on the field, you can normal summon it to have it become an effect monster with these effects. Oh, it's attack and defense are zero, by the way. So it's uh, slightly worse than Karibo, or better, I don't know. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. Ah, that's how it gets you. Neither player can target this card with card effects. And the other effect, is the attacks from your opponent's monsters become direct attacks. What? How is that good? Yeah, why would you want your opponent's monsters attacks to become direct attacks? Well, I assume it's because if you're using some kind of strategy where direct attacks end up doing something different. And if you always have a monster on the field, that's probably a good thing. So yeah, if you, I, I, I'm guessing that there's some sort of really intricate strategy that could make this useful. I would use it just because the picture is 
the most insane thing I've ever laid eyes on. Oh, we got one called Lyrilusk Lyri Recital Starling. And she is pretty fancy looking, I gotta say. It looks like Raven from the Teen Titans evolved to level nine. It says Winged Beast slash XYZ slash effect. And it says two plus level one monsters. What does that mean? Oh, is this a, uh, oh, this is an XYZ summon monster? That means you need at least two level one monsters in order to summon it, right? And this is where I get stumped. If this card is XYZ, summoned, you can target one face-up monster on the field. I'm gonna target my duck dummy. It gains 300 attack slash defense for each material attached to this card. Material? Am I supposed to wax some plastic on here? What's going on? Once per turn, you could detach one material from this card. Add one level one winged beast monster from your deck to your hand. All battle damage you take from battles involving this XYZ summon card is also inflicted to your opponent. And again, attack zero, defense zero. A lot of zeros. Go key head bat. And bat has two T's. So you know it's extreme. I'm surprised there's no Z in there. It looks like if the creature from the Black Lagoon were a Dragon Ball Z character. If this card is in your hand, you can send one other go key monster from, go key, go key. You can send one other go key monster from your hand to the GY. That's graveyard. We're, he's a personal friend of mine, that graveyard. He lets me call him GY. Then target one Goki monster you control. Special summon this card as defense in defense position, and if you do, the targeted monster gets 800 attack until the end of this turn. This card is sent from the field to the GY. Is GY like the OC? Is it gonna be like a... a teen drama set in the GY. If this card is sent from the field to the GY, you can add one Goki card from your deck to your hand, except Goki Headbat. Oh, except this one. You can only use each effect of Goki Headbat once per turn. So in other words, this is one of those monsters where if you have a bunch of them, it can they can combine their effects, I guess, and just keep summoning them uh, by sending them to the graveyard or the GY. Old McDonald had some cards. GY, GY, oh. G, Y. Amazon S. <laughs> Pet Liger. There's a beast fusion effect monster. Ah, that's the noise I make when I don't know what I'm looking at. Looks like a Warcraft mount. Got that crazy armor with the giant shoulder pads and the spikes. So this is a fusion monster. So in order to summon this, you gotta use Amazon S Tiger, don't got that, and one Amazon S monster, which this would qualify as if, if it were a normal monster. I'm slowly learning, very slowly, and I'm probably getting it all wrong. Please feel free to correct me in the comments and I'll, I'll slowly accumulate that information. Once per battle, if this card attacks during damage calculation, you can make this card gain 500 attack during that damage calculation only. If your Amazon S monster attacked an opponent's monster after damage calculation, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls. It loses 800 attack. That's pretty sweet. Problem is I can't summon this. Not without the monsters uh, it requires. So it might be good to have in my deck just in case I get those, but what are the odds? I don't know. Monsters your opponent controls cannot attack Amazon S monsters you control except this one. So yeah, this is a pretty sweet card. I can't use it yet. Uh, got a trap card. Altergeist Protocol. Or Poltergeist Otocol. It's got a picture... What is that? I'm at a loss, but it kind of looks like a bull crossed with a penguin drowning. I guess the Altergeist protocol is where you have to save your pet bull penguin from drowning. The activation and effects of Altergeist cards, which I guess are a kind of card, uh, activated on your field cannot be negated. When your opponent activates a monster effect, you can send one other face-up Altergeist card you control to the GY. I'm sure a lot of you are like, how does he not know that Graveyard is abbreviated to GY? I've never seen this before. Certainly not to my knowledge. Negate the activation and if you do, destroy it. You can only use the effect of Altergeist Protocol once per turn. But what if I've got more than one of these bull penguin monstrosities? Well, I don't know how useful that one is. Fire King Avatar Avata. This is like a crossover between Harry Potter and Avatar The Last Airbender. This guy's voiced by Mark Hamill. And not that I would ever accuse a Yu-Gi-Oh card of being subtle, but this is clearly just Ganesha, right? I'm not crazy, am I? It's Ganesha with flaming axes, which is pretty badass. Yeah, I like this card. It's got four stars. It's a beast warrior slash effect monster. When a monster effect is activated while this monster is on the field, you can negate this activation, and if you do, destroy one other fire monster in your hand or field. If this card is destroyed and sent to the Chihuahua, you can target one fire beast, beast warrior or winged beast monster in your graveyard, except 
Fire King Avatar Avata Kedavra. Special summon it, but it has its effects negated, and also it's destroyed during its end phase. What I've gathered from this is that don't piss off Ganesha. Soldier Dragons. It's literally what it sounds like. Dragons in a suit of armor. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can special summon one level two or lower dragon monster from your deck. I, uh, that sounds pretty good to me. And not only that, you've combined the best traits of the dragon, fire breathing, wings, the voice of Sean Connery, presumably, with the best elements of knights, which are dragon's worst foes, or vice versa. So this is like, we're dead. If these guys were real, we'd be dead. There is no stopping them because they are, a, you can't send a knight after them because they are the knight. They are the knight. We're screwed. Dragon knights are gonna murder all of us. Leng Ling. Leng Ling. Leng Leng. Leng Ling. What? This is a dragon slash union slash effect monster. And once per turn, you can either target one face up monster you control, equip this card to that target, or Unequip this card and special summon it. The original attack of the monster equipped with this card becomes 1000. It can make a second attack during each battle phase. Also, if the equipped monster would be destroyed by battle or card effect, destroy this card instead. So if you equip a monster with this card, it can attack twice, but its attack is lowered significantly or hired. Hired? Heightened! Depending on who you give it to, and it can attack twice, so uh, for example, my soldier dragons, only, I say they're mine, I've not put them in my deck yet, probably going to. If I equip this to them, they'd gain 300 attack points and attack twice. I'm learning. Got one more card and it's Vendred Striges. Vendred Striges? Looks like if Reaper from, from Overwatch had a pet griffin from Harry Potter. It's a monster, it's a zombie card. Hey, I think this is the first zombie card. I used to actually, I didn't play the game, but I played Nightmare Troubadour on the DS and I had a zombie deck, and uh, so this is the first zombie card I've really considered putting in my real life deck that I don't have yet. If this card is sent to the GY, you can reveal one Vendred card in your hand, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Vendred monster ritual summon using this card on the field gives the following effect. You can only use each of the preceding effects of Vendred Stridges, Stridges, Strigadoo, once per turn. After damage calculation, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can draw one card, then discard one card. So what does all that mean? So this basically allows you to bring it back from the graveyard by uh, revealing one card in your hand and then bringing it onto the field from your graveyard, special summoning it. Hence the zombie thing, I guess. When there's no more room in the GY, the cards will walk the summoning field. George Romero, a big Yu-Gi-Oh enthusiast, obviously. Well, that's all nine cards that we got this time, and now I have to pick one. It's very hard not to go with Duck Dummy, honestly. This is a very strong contender. Obviously, a lot of these, as I said, rely on having other cards. The Amazon S, Pet Liger needs other cards in order to be summoned. And some of these other ones kind of rely on other cards to use them. But you know what? I was so taken with them. And if you ask me if they were real, if they were in real life, we'd be in big trouble. Soldier dragons. I know a lot of you are looking at me like, what are you doing Get putting soldier dragons? You had some really powerful cards. You had Lang Ling, you had Duck Dummy. But you're going with soldier dragons? Yeah, sue me. I'll send my army of soldier dragons after you. They're much worse than lawyers. Oh my god, imagine if the soldier dragons combined with lawyers. They would rule the world. We'd be in big trouble. Well, that's what we got from the Circuit Break Booster Pack. That was pretty cool. Uh, it was kind of overwhelming with the amount of information they were giving me uh, about the cards. I didn't know what the hell I was reading half the time, but I slowly figured it out. This is why, to me, Yu-Gi-Oh! the anime is extremely unrealistic, because if it was like real life, or at least, if, if I were in the show, I would spend most of the episode staring at one card being like, huh? I wouldn't know what I was doing. I'd basically be Joey. Thanks for tuning in this time. I want to say once again a big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, pledgers, guys. You guys are why we are able to do this, and I want to say thank you so much, and I, I wish you guys well. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Masco X, who is also doing his own opening of uh, Dragon Ball Z themed cards this December, uh, leading up to Christmas as a sort of advent calendar style series of videos. And uh, you can check him out at his channel. Uh, they're highly worth watching, and all of his content is highly worth watching. And I wouldn't be doing this without him. So uh, thank you to Masako X and Philly. I'll catch you guys next time where I'll draw even more cards and try and know what they are and why. Till then, this is Martin Villainy coming to you from Duelist Kingdom. Gonna go check out that nudist beach. Bye bye.